you so much for joining me in this video. I'm actually going to do a tag video. I haven't done a tag video in quite a while. And this one, I kind of saved this tag, I want to say months ago, for me to maybe do on an occasion when I was inspired to do a tag. So this, I am going to give credit where credit is due. The first person that I saw do this tag was my life, Wendy. And Wendy had posted the tag and I said, oh, that's, that's really cute. And then after I saw her, her tag, I saw Linda from Josephine's daughter actually do the tag as well as mutton style. So I watched all three of those videos with the tag. And I believe that Wendy had said the tag was started by Older Women Rock. And it's all about YouTube. It's all about why did you start a YouTube channel and what inspired you? So I'm gonna actually read the questions. And the very first one is, why did you start your YouTube channel? What motivated you? What was your inspiration? So I'm probably way out of the norm because I actually started to do videos way back in 2006. I think Jay started the YouTube channel, my husband Jay, the original YouTube channel, and I was posting some content on his channel back when video was really funky, had this big video camera, had really weird equipment compared to today. But it wasn't until 2009 that I decided to start my own YouTube channel. At the time, Jay's channel, and I think it still is Ace Maker, that's what he had called it. And I didn't want, I wanted to see if I could brand myself, if I could, you know, just kind of brand myself. Mainly my thought was for lifestyle videos and real estate related lifestyle videos. So I started my channel 2009. And I started to create content that showed a lifestyle, that showed my area, my market area, all geared to real estate, obviously. And I started to do storytelling about the lifestyle. And I was very, very happy doing that. My motivation initially was business because I was being found for YouTube. I was getting customers. My clients were happy, especially when I did vlog style videos and I talked about their house. I filmed my sellers in their home. I, then I went out and I filmed the community and I talked about what life was like in this particular town. Those are the types of videos I was creating. It, it really served a purpose back then. You know, YouTube to me was just a place for me to deposit those videos. It wasn't necessarily an idea of a community for me. It was just a place for me to share it, a YouTube video that I could share to my vlog, my blog my real estate website, all those other other things. So that's what it was all about. And while I was spending so much time on YouTube, I started to, obviously being a, a woman my age, I started to fall upon skincare videos and anti-aging type videos. And, and I started to watch, and I still remember the first few people that I actually watched on YouTube that talked about skincare and anti-aging. And I've mentioned them many times before. And, and since that time, some of them I've really gotten to know well and have built a relationship with. That was really amazing. And they inspired me to, to get on the journey, to get on the skincare journey. And, that, and that's really what I did. But it wasn't until 2016 that I started Retin-A, that I started to really do any serious skincare. So at that point in time, my channel slowly converted over to less and less camping and lifestyle and real estate to more and more anti-aging, makeup, stuff like that. So I didn't, the second question is, did you do any research, preparation, or practice? The answer is no. I just turned the camera on myself. I did read a lot of, of, because I was a vlogger anyways, sharing lifestyle, I did read a lot about techniques for video, techniques for vlogging, telling your story and stuff like that. So in that sense, perhaps that is the research. But I didn't really practice in the sense of like, all right, I have a camera. 
you know, do I aim it at myself? How do I do this? You know, type of thing. I learned how to edit. I do, I have a, an iPhone and sometimes when I'm out and about, I film on my iPhone. Usually when I'm inside like I am now, I'm, I'm filming on my Canon right now, M50. And then I have a vlogging camera, which is a Sony. So I have a couple of different cameras and I have learned really upped my editing game and upped my video game and the fact that I like to have a clear video. I, I know like sound it. is important so I try to work on my microphone and my heat just kicked on you're gonna hear that but I like to be well lit I don't want to sit in a dark room I don't want to I don't want to have a blurry image of myself I don't want to I don't want people to struggle with seeing me if they want to see me so I'm almost too transparent I'm almost out there too much instead of veiling myself <laughs> or filtering my videos I mean I use lights that's about it for my filtering on my videos I wish I could figure that rest of it out I know this probably is going to be an idiot if you want to spend the money I'm sure there's a video app that will make you look beautiful I just haven't um, wanted to spend the money on that, <laughs> on that at all <laughs> so question number three do you have or did you have a game plan from the get-go did you know what you wanted to talk about and be about so like I said in the beginning I did have a game plan it was all real estate and at that point in time I did know exactly what I wanted to talk about when my channel started to morph into skincare and makeup I didn't know I just knew that I was at the time I was going to show myself daily maybe I did a lot of the VEDA challenges video every day in April video every day in August and I knew I was going to show myself in the camera and it's sort of like bearing your soul to a bunch of strangers because they're seeing what you look like you know they're they're seeing you every every single day yeah I, I the only game plan I have now is really struggling with how often do I publish how long my videos should be and do I stay true to myself or am I more dictated to the views when I say that Everyone has videos that does better than others, and my Retin-A videos do the best. I have the most views when I talk Retin-A and skincare, anti-aging. When I do something I really like, vlogging, or just sitting here gabbing with you guys, they don't get as many views. So my game plan is basically trying to find that balance of being able to talk about anti-aging and skincare and also share vlogging and lifestyle and be true to who I am whether or not the video gets a ton of views or not and that's pretty well what I have been doing so number four what have you found to be unexpected challenges and what have you found to be unexpected rewards unexpected challenges are the amount of trolls uh, or the amount of people that are so sadly and so miserable in their real life that they feel they can hide behind a keyboard and attack verbally a content creator because they don't like how she looks they don't like how she sounds they don't like what she's talking about or he that they that rather than being constructive criticism they are nasty so that to me is an unexpected challenge to Freedom of speech is important and understanding that everyone can say whatever they want, but I always struggle with those people that cross the line and are hatred and, and just vomit ugliness. So that's been a challenge to kind of accept that, kind of not let it affect me, certainly not let it dictate the content I'm going to create, but putting it in its proper place. Those people they're kind of like really they're going to be really sad they're going to need they're going to need something in their life that they're filling it with hatred you know so i feel really bad for them unexpected rewards is i never expected to have true friends on youtube i never expected that i have met in reality the most beautiful women honest to the t that I can trust with anything and there's a couple of them that comes to mind but I'm going to really talk about the two that I really know the best and probably the first one that I really got to see in her soul was Sheila and at the time her channel was Life with Lily I realized very early on when I talked to her 
physically talk to her, and not just leave a comment on YouTube, that she was a true, beautiful, genuine woman. And that she's had a lot of crap thrown at her, health-wise. And probably with trolls as well, who knows. But she's had a lot of crap thrown at her. And even though in her own personal life she's had these health issues and all that, she's always been there for others. So getting to know Sheila and develop that friendship with her was amazing to me. Amazing. And she's the type of person that I know I could pick up the phone right now and call and say, do you have a few moments I need to talk to somebody? She'll definitely be there. She'll drop whatever she's doing. That's the unexpected rewards because the second person that comes to mind that I feel that close to is Marlene Fab and Glam. Marlene and I and Sheila, the three of us, talk every day. Every single day. And we talk. We talk on a, a platform called Vox where we actually hear each other's voice. We can leave each other messages. You know, we just talk every day. And Marlene also has gone through her, her challenges this past year, especially with her son. She's gone through her challenges, yet I know if I were to reach out and say, I need you, help me, I know without a doubt she would be there. And I have friends in real life, belly to belly, that I see day to day that I know would come when I need them as well. But these two ladies, I think we've gone through so much the last couple of years together that I can truly say without a doubt they are so dependable, they're so honest, and I love them dearly, and I know they would, they would be there for me in a heartbeat if I needed them. And there are other people, people that I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting that I, I hope to meet soon, someone that I've tried to meet a number of times, and just life things have happened. So um, Mary Ellen, you know, and I hate naming names because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget someone, but um, she was the first person to give me a shout out, Mary Ellen. We do a text chat. I have other women that I have that I talk to on a regular basis as well, and then some that I have met, Melissa 55, Kristen 321, uh, Miss Kristen. I have met them. I've met Bella uh, from England, a beauty on a budget. I've met Gail. Gail and Bella came to the States, and that was an amazing trip. I met up with them in Nashville. So, so many, many really true, true, beautiful beautiful people and that has been my unexpected reward because I've been able to stretch my wings. I've been able to meet people and know that they are good people. You know, I've been able to I've been able to do that and I, that I never expected out of YouTube. And if I forgot to mention someone, I apologize. I really don't like dropping names because there's too many. Uh, there's a number of other people. Anyways, I'm going to stop while I'm ahead before I bury myself. I apologize for anyone I didn't mention. But that has definitely been the unexpected rewards, the beautiful people that I've actually met and the friendships I've actually developed. The next question, have you experienced self-doubt? I have. I'm 65 and I've had a lot of self-doubt in my life and in my YouTube world as well. There's a lot of people in YouTube and in general, but there's a lot of people in YouTube that want people to fail. I said it. They want people to fail and so they'll throw stuff at you in hopes that you take the hook and then you choke on it, basically. So I've realized that there are so many people that have hidden agendas and that there's also so many people that thrive in negativity. And I think that that was sort of like, ooh, you know, in, in the beginning, if someone said something really negative to me, I would hear that in my brain. And then I got to the point where I just realized that people have these agendas. They don't want to see you succeed. And I, I, I'm not going to get caught up in the gossip. I'm not going to get sucked into the self-doubt that other people like to plant at you. So I, I just avoid it all. And as soon as somebody starts to talk about it to me, I'm like, done. I'm like, done. I don't want to hear it. There's, there's not one part of me that wants to get in, sucked into that mentality. Because there are people that are just so driven by self-doubt and hatred of themselves that everyone around them is out to get them. And they 
they just thrive in drama. I don't thrive in drama, so I avoid it by all costs. I do. I, I'm just not going to buy into it. Is YouTube a hobby? Do you do it for fun or do you plan on making money? I work full time. So YouTube started out as part of my, you know, job early on in the sense of wanting to build a community and talk about real estate. And then when it started to really change into skincare and things of that nature, it, I got to the point where, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could make money on YouTube? I mean, that would be kind of nice. I'm 66. By the time you see this, I'll have had my birthday. But wouldn't it be nice if I could make money on YouTube and I could get some money coming in a little bit as I retire? But no, I work full time. YouTube still to me is more of a, it's a fun hobby, but it's also, I'd love to be able to get some income off of it, even if it's just a little bit as I go into my golden years, my retirement years, that it gives me some sort of a supplement. But I'm not counting on anything, and so I'm not looking at it in that in that way. I think if it were to become a job, I think I might have more frustrations with it and things of that nature because my channel has grown extremely slowly, if you think about it. Uh, I don't have all the magic answers. You know, I don't. Um, I just know that I enjoy what I do. So the last question is, is your personal top tips that have helped you grow and the few mistakes you've made? Well, I think I've already covered that. I don't buy into sub for sub. Don't buy into thinking that a larger content creator is going to help you grow. Work on growing your own tribe, your own people. Stay true to yourself. You know, I, I'll do wig videos. I'll do skincare videos. I do a little bit of vlogging. Stay true to yourself, no matter whether anyone is going to watch it, I guess. And, uh, but I think my, my biggest takeaway that has helped me, not that it's helped me grow, is I'm not in a rush to get there and I'm not willing to take a shortcut to get there. The same thing in my business. I'd rather walk the ethical line than gain more by skirting below it. And I look at YouTube the same way. I'm growing, I'm growing slowly, but I'm growing organically. And I'm fine with that organic growth. I think that, I, you know, when I, get a, when I get a product and I talk about a product, I, I get, I, I'm pretty honest if something isn't working for me. I'm doing a video on this one. I don't know when it'll come up, but you know, I've been using it. What's my feeling six weeks later? I'm, and I'm pretty honest with how I feel about things. So I don't want to trade my integrity for a YouTube review <laughs> or a YouTube subscriber. So I'm willing to take my time and, and do an organic and, and grow organically. Because I think that's ultimately the gift that keeps on giving. You know, that's the, the part that where people will come back and watch you because there's something about you that resonates with them. I'm not perfect. I've never said it was perfect. I don't want to be perfect. Perfect must be pretty miserable. My house is a mess. My life is chaotic at times. But my house, it's my life. And every day I always remember the glass is half full rather than half empty. And I surround myself with that attitude and I'm just blessed to have some really wonderful true people in my life. So I'm going to link the ladies below that I saw this video on. Hey, and if you uh, feel like doing the tag, I'll leave the questions below and you can also do the tag. <laughs> Bye guys.